These are the 4.4 notes. This is all about finding zeros. Remember, zeros is just another word for our answers. Our essential question, how do I find zeros in standard form? Um, the first question, if you have it in factored form, something like x plus 2 and x minus 5, we automatically know that you're just going to change the signs to make it negative 2 and positive 5. However, if you're in standard form, just like we have right here, it's hard to tell what the zeros are. You can't just look at it and change the sign. So what we're going to learn today is how to find the answers from that. Let's talk quickly about the difference between factors versus zeros. Factors are going to be when they are in their set of parentheses, like x plus 3 and x minus 4. Those are factors. However, when we pull the zeros out, there's two ways we can write them. We can either write it as just the opposite sign, positive 4, or I know you'll see delta math do it as f of negative 3 equals 0 and f of 4 equals 0. That's how they say that those are the zeros. Let's just kind of make a little note there about that's how delta math does it. All right, so we're going to work on something today called synthetic division. The first thing we're going to do is try to decide whether something is a factor. So we're checking to see whether it's an answer. If something is a zero of the polynomial, it will give you a remainder of zero when you divide. So we're going to divide this out here. What we do with synthetic division is we create this little bar like that, and we're going to take each of the coefficients of the problem, just like that. Those numbers I got from doing 5, negative 1, positive 2, and negative 2. Then I'm going to take my factor here, x plus 1, and I put the 0 on the outside. So we don't want to take the plus 1 and put it on the outside. We want to make sure that our negative 1 goes on the outside. This will give us a 0 of negative 1. Again, this is called synthetic division. The way this works is you are going to drop this 5 down. So whatever number is in the front here drops down. Then you multiply negative 1 times 5 and put your answer right there. Then you add those together to make negative 6, and you repeat that process again. So negative 1 times negative 6 gets you 6. You add 2 plus 6 to get 8. Then you multiply negative 1 times 8 to get negative 8, and you add those to get negative 10. Since this negative 10 is not uh, the number 0, this means that x plus 1 is not a factor, which in turn tells you the same thing, that negative 1 is not a 0. In math, most of the time we want to find the answers, and all this did, since we didn't get a 0 where that negative 10 is, it told us that one of these is not an answer. So ideally, we're looking for things to be 0 at the end. Example number two, there's one special case here. Notice that there's no x to the third. It jumps from x to the fourth down to negative 3x squared. So if you're missing a term, right, like x to the third for us, you just had to put in a zero. All right, so we'll write a 1 for the x to the third, x to the fourth, and then 0, x to the third. Then negative 3 for the x squared, and negative 3 for the x, and negative 10. So just make sure anytime you're missing a term, if it skips over one of the exponents, that you write a 0 in its place. The x plus 2, I will check to make sure that negative 2 so it's on the outside. Right. Bring down 1. So whatever first number, drop it straight down. Then you alternate between multiplying and adding.
multiply, then add. So I multiply negative 2 times 1, negative 2. Add those to make negative 2. Multiply, 4. Add, 1. Multiply the negative 2 on the outside by that 1 to make negative 2. Add, negative 5. Multiply to make positive 10. And add together to make 0. We really liked when we get a 0 as an answer when we divide because this tells us that x plus 2, this one that we started with, is a factor. And more importantly, it tells us that the number negative 2 is a 0. And with these math problems, all we're doing is looking for our zeros. Okay, example number three. This x minus 3 again is a factor. It's asking, is this a factor? So your answer is either going to be yes if you get a 0 at the end or no if you don't. I'll give you guys a chance. See if you can set that up. The setup should look like that. Start by dropping down that first one. Multiply. Add. Multiply 3 times 8, 24. Add those, 16. Multiply 3 times 16, 48. And then those to get 50. So the question says, is x minus 3 a factor? You would say no. If this is not a 0 at the end, then it's not a factor. It's not an answer. It's not a 0. All right, so, so far we've just been deciding whether something is an answer or not. The next part, what we're going to do is there we are going to be given one of our answers or zeros or factors. And we are going to then find the rest. So they're telling us right off the bat that this x plus 1 is going to work. It is going to get you an answer of 0 at the end. And then we'll go from there and find the rest. So we'll put a negative 1 on the outside. Remember, I always change the sign so the 0 is negative 1. Another thing is the degree is equal to the number of zeros. So this is a degree 3 polynomial, which means I'm looking for three answers. They gave me one, so I'm looking for two more. I'll start off with the coefficients, the numbers in front of the x's. I have one in front of the x to the third, three in front of the x squared, negative six in front of the x, and negative eight is my constant. You complete your synthetic division by dropping down your first number and then alternating between multiplying and adding. The way the question is phrased, I knew I was going to get a zero right here because it tells me that this is one of the factors. X plus one is one of the factors. It's not asking yes or no, it's telling me it is. So I've just confirmed that this negative 1 is an answer, is a 0. What I do next is I take the numbers 1, 2, and negative 8, and I make a new equation. We call it the depressed equation. And they call it depressed because it's one exponent lower, or one degree lower, than what you started with. So this one, instead of representing the x to the third, like it did in our original problem, it represents our x squared. So one x squared, I'll just write as x squared. 
and then plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. So that's your depressed equation. From there, you're then able to factor that. Factoring meaning what numbers multiply to negative 8 and add to positive 2. Again, what numbers multiply to negative 8, add to positive 2. That would be a positive 4 and a negative 2. These are my other two factors. So if I need to then find my zeros from them, all I have to do is change the sign. So x plus 4 becomes negative 4 as one of my answers. And x minus 2 becomes positive 2 as one of my answers. So my three zeros of this polynomial are negative 1, negative 4, and positive 2. Example number 5. For the polynomial x to the third plus 7x squared plus 7x minus 15, one of the zeros is negative 5. Find the remaining zeros. All right, so once again, I want to point out that in delta math, delta math will t give you the answer like this. It'll say f of negative 5 equals 0. That just means that negative 5 is the number that you want to use on the outside of your synthetic division. Line up the coefficients 1, 7, 7, and negative 15. Those are coming from right here. Bring down the 1. And alternate between multiplying and adding. Take a second, try that problem. Make sure you get the 0 at the end here. All right, so because this problem told me that one of the answers is negative 5, I know I should end up with a 0 at the end here, which, I've, which I did. Now it's time to write the depressed equation. But before I do that, I'm just going to come over here and make a list of my zeros. I know there are, again, going to be three of them. One, two, and three. And they gave me one to begin with, the negative 5. I don't have to change the sign of the negative 5 because what goes on the outside is always the 0, not the factor. Notice on example number 4, they gave me the factor x plus 1, and so I had to change it to a negative 1. This, they have already given it to me in the changed form as the 0. The depressed equation would be x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Again, those are always starting with one exponent lower than what your original problem was. I didn't write the 1. The 1 would go right there, but that's not usually how we write those type of problems, so I leave it off. Then you factor. When you factor, remember you look for two numbers that have to multiply to the last, the last number, negative 3, and add to the middle. Most of you guys are familiar with factoring, but just in case you forgot. Right. The numbers that multiply to 3 are 3 and 1. In order to get my signs to work, I have to have this 3 be positive and the 1 be negative. That's the only way those are going to add to positive 2. Once I fo uh, factor that, I can then change the signs. So x plus 3 becomes negative 3 and x minus 1 becomes positive 1. All right, example number 6. This is actually going to be a little bit more work because it gives us a 0 as 4i, an imaginary number. So when we set this up with 4i, it's important that you give yourself plenty of space in between each of our numbers that we have in our division. So notice how long I'm making that division bar. So my zeros are 4i, and I know there are going to be three of them again because of that 3. So I'm going to put a 4i on the outside, and then I'm going to space these out. 1, give a big space, negative 3, big space, 16, big space, and negative 48.
The reason I'm giving big spaces is because I am going to end up having unlike terms here that I'm not going to be able to add together. Remember, I acts just like an x, so we're going to have to give it some space. 4i times 1 is 4i. I'm going to put this under here, but I'm not going to be able to add i's with real numbers. You cannot add real numbers and imaginary numbers together. All you can do is write them next to each other. So don't add reals and imaginaries. Example, negative 3 plus 4i is not 1i. Okay, you're not going to be able to add those. You just leave it like negative 3 plus 4i. The next thing we're going to do is take 4i and multiply it by negative 3 plus 4i. So this is going to require us to pull something off to the side and do some distributing. Negative 12i plus 16i squared. Last week we learned that i squared was negative 1, so this is actually 16 times negative 1. So I have negative 12i minus 16. And I'm going to put that right here under the 16 over here, negative 12i minus 16. Now I can combine my real numbers here, positive 16 and negative 16 cancel. And then I'm just left with negative 12i. So now I have to multiply 4i times negative 12i. That gets me negative 36i squared. Oh, I'm sorry, negative 48. Negative 48i squared, which i squared can be rewritten as negative 1, and I multiply to make a positive 48. And then I'll put that positive 48 right there. Those two cancel out, and I get that answer of zero that I was looking for. Remember, if you don't get a zero right there, you've made a mistake somewhere in the problem if they're telling you that one of the zeros is 4i. Now, if you remember from last week, 4i always comes with what we call a conjugate pair. It's a negative version, so negative 4i is also an answer to this. So because I can't write this 1 minus 3 plus 4i minus 12i, because I can't write this as a depressed equation, I don't want to actually want to combine i's with x's. I can't factor that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do one more round of synthetic division, negative 4i. This one should work out a lot faster. It's going to cancel each other out a lot more often. Negative 4i times 1, negative 4i. Cool, that cancels. I leave negative 3. Negative 4i times negative 3 is 12i. Great. Those cancel. Zero. And then I get zero and zero. So at the bottom here, this 1 and the negative 3, since I did synthetic division twice, I have to use the depressed equation twice. So instead of being x to the third, I'm going to drop this all the way down to x to the first power. Because I did this synthetic division twice, I'm going to lower the exponent by 2. So this 1 becomes 1x, just a regular x. That becomes minus 3, and I have the equal 0. And so instead of having to factor this, this is the only factor. This is my answer. So all I have to do is change the sign and get an answer of positive 3. And here are your three zeros.